here with Beauty Jadour with my second Nomi pattern, which is ME2016. So this pattern has two different variations. So it's like a shorter or a longer. And let me tell you why I love this pattern so much. First of all, it's really easy to make, like super simple to make. Um, I do believe this could be for a beginner sewer um, up to, you know, whatever. So for the fabric suggestions, it's cottons, linen blends, seersucker, double knits, taffeta. Um, I think this fabric, which I love so much, is a brocade. So you can use a brocade, a jacquard, denim, pretty much any fabric you want, which is, again, why I love it so much. And it's just like a, a no-fail pattern. So it also has my sleeves. If you follow me for any period of time, you know how much I love a sleeve. So this sleeve now in pattern form. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and cut the pieces out that you need. Um, and everything should be pretty self-explanatory. Let me go ahead and open this. So, yep, you're gonna need pretty much every pattern. Just decide whether you're gonna do the shorter version or the longer version. For this demonstration and for this tutorial, I'm gonna do the shorter version. So I'm gonna need piece number one, two, three, everything with the exception of number seven. So you're gonna to need to uh, cut out all the pattern pieces. If you're making the longer version, then you're gonna cut out pattern piece number seven. But um, other than that, Yep, yeah, you won't need it. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we have all the pattern pieces cut out. And what we're going to do now is start with the bodice. Now, what I did, I didn't use a lining. I used the same fabric um, as a facing. So you have that option. The fabric, the pattern calls for a lining, but, you know, you can do pretty much whatever you want. So we're going to start with the front. And... This is my front. So we'll go ahead and pin the darts on the side. And just make sure before you get started that you do all the markings. And the markings are gonna be really important with this dress as well, just to make sure everything is properly lined up. So let's go ahead and just pin these. And I'm going to do this on the facing, AKA lining, as well as the, um, the fashion fabric. Okay, so this is uh, the front. I'm going to do the same thing with the back as well as the, uh, the back lining. All right, and I'm using this as the back. And so a shortcut, if you don't want to because i know you know a lot of people just kind of want to to sew and get this over with um, what you can do is instead of adding your darts to the the lining or the facing what you can do is just do your darts to the front iron it out and then trace before you trace the pattern then trace your pattern using this as the pattern because it's almost like you have the darts built in and you can do that for the lining um, if you want to kind of like skip this step with having to add the dark. So we're going to go ahead and stitch the darts on the front and the back and the front and the back lining. After you do that, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and press it. So for the back, you want to press the darts toward the, the middle of the back, toward the center. And for the front, you want to press the darts going in a down direction. So once you press them, or once you sew them, just go ahead and turn this part over and you're gonna just press it down. You wanna do that for the um, actual fabric as well as the lining. Okay, so I have all the darts on the bodice 
finished. Now what you want to do is go ahead and set the lining pieces to the side. So we now have the back and the front. I believe. Yep, we have the back and the front. Okay, so now what you want to do is take the neck interfacing and apply it and go ahead and iron it on. So you want to take this, this part goes on the neck, you want to do the other side. And then the front. So go ahead and iron this on. Uh, and just press it out really well. Okay, so we have the interfacing connected. Let me go ahead and just kind of trim these little edges off. So now what we're going to do is connect the back to the front at the shoulders and the side seams. Okay, so go ahead and stitch at the side seams as well as the shoulders. Once you do that, open up the seam allowance and press that flat. Okay, so we have the back and the front connected. And we have the seams pressed open. Now we're going to go ahead and set this to the side. And we're going to grab piece number eight, which is the upper front. So if you want your, the, bot, the bottom of your dress to be, I don't know, a little bigger, give it a little more volume, this is where you're going to add a few inches or however much you'd like um, to the, the front of this pattern. So in order to do that, you'll just fold the pattern like you're cutting it normal. I think it's, yeah, you cut this here on the fold um, and you want to add as many inches as you want added on at this point. So what we're going to do, you should have already marked the fabric. I'm just going to reinforce these. And you have in these corners here, so what we're going to do is reinforce the corners and then we'll clip into them. Okay, so we have the upper front, we have it, we have the corners here reinforced, and now we have the right side of the fabric. This is the right side. We're going to get the pockets, and this is going to be piece number eight, I believe. No, it's not. It is nine. These are pockets number nine. So you do have the pocket facing and then you have the pocket. So just make sure you grab the proper piece and it is going to be number nine. Make sure you have your marking still marked. And what you're going to do is transfer your marking from the wrong side to the front on each of these. And then you have your marking for your pocket. So we're going to attach the pocket right side to right side. Matching up the notches. And then go ahead and pin.
do the same thing on the other side. Matching the markings and the notches. And then you're going to go ahead and stitch between the markings. Once you stitch between these markings, you're going to then fold this over and press. Okay, so we have the pockets pressed and top stitched. Now what we want to do is turn this to the wrong side. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. This is the right side pocket. You want to take pocket piece number 10, which is the pocket facing. And you want to attach these with right sides together. Matching up the notches. You want to do that on both sides. And then go ahead and pin. Okay, so once you have it pinned, what you're going to do is go ahead and stitch from the top corner all the way around here, making sure you don't catch this fabric in the back. So you're going to lift it up, stitch from here all the way over here to this end. Okay, so we have the pocket facing connected. And now what we want to do is go ahead and pin this to the actual pocket. So we're going to just stick a couple pins in here and on the side. And what we're going to do is just do a short basting stitch right here as well as right here. So for each side, right here and then down here. Okay, so we have the pocket facing basted. Um, now what we want to do is go ahead and attach the upper back skirt, which I believe is piece number 11, to this front part. All right, and so with right sides together, This is the right side and you have the notch you want to go ahead and match the notch to this side uh, no you want to match it to this side that's why at the beginning I told you that it's really important to add your notches um, just because a lot of these pieces kind of look the same um, so a good way to differentiate them is with these notches so we want to go ahead and line this up okay so what we want to do now is go ahead and stitch the side seams using a 5 8 7 inch seam allowance and then press the seam open. Okay, we have the back, uh, the, up, the back upper connected to the front. And now what we want to do is do the gathering stitches. So with the gathering stitches, you want to do two rows of gathering stitches on the back, and you want it to end here. So you want your the ends of your gathering stitches to be pretty long from here to here. Then we want to do another set from here to here. And then the third set, which is at the seam, actually it's here. And then the third set from here to here. So three sets of gathering stitches, two rows. 
Okay, so now we have the gathering stitches ready. And what we're going to do is take the bodice. You're going to match up the side seams. With right side to right side. Then you're going to pin it and then you're going to take the other side seam, do the same thing. Just make sure you get your uh, gathering stitches out of the way. <clears throat> And then with right sides to right side, you're going to pin this. And then with all the fabric that's in the middle, you want to go ahead and adjust your gathering so that it fits. But while you're doing this, you want to make sure that the gathering is even as you go around. So you may have to kind of take it out, put it back in. And you want to do this by pulling two of the top strings. Let's see here. So once you have them, so where it fits, you want to go ahead and pin. I wouldn't cut the um, gathering stitches quite yet, just because you may need to adjust them again. So this is the front part, and you can see it from the front how it looks. So this is the bodice, and this is going to be the top layer of the, well, the top row of the skirt. So what you want to do now is go ahead and do the same thing you just did with this portion for gathering. You want to do it for the middle part as well as the left side. So now what you're going to do is go ahead and take it over to the machine. You're going to stitch this using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, uh, but don't press it once you're done. Okay, so we have the bodice attached. Now what you want to do is you want to press it, but don't press the bottom half. Only press the top. So you want to kind of start from here, kind of push it up and just press the bodice. You don't want to press this. And, and I say that because um, you like the amount of volume that it gives. Um, sometimes it can flatten it out. You know, you can be the judge of it. If you have a fabric that's like really voluminous, you know, go ahead and press it if you're okay with that. But for this particular dress, I like to keep mine unpressed because it gives it just a little bit, uh, you know, more space between. So, 
go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we have the bodice pressed. Now what you wanna do is put the two back pieces together, lining up the neck. And then you wanna go ahead and line up the seam lines right here and make sure these are absolutely perfect. And then pin it. Okay, <clears throat> so now what you wanna do is go ahead and base stitch. So the pattern calls for a 24 inch invisible zipper. So you wanna go down right to where these notches, you get to the notches, then you wanna go ahead and do a regular stitch. So from this point to the notch, a basting stitch, and from the notch on down, a regular stitch. After you stitch this, you're gonna go ahead and open up that seam and uh, press it out really well. Okay, so we have the back uh, base stitched and the remainder, um, we have that just regular stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and install the zipper. So there's a couple ways you can install a zipper. Um, one is you can just, of course, have this base stitched and then you wanna take the zipper Place it at the top, pin it as you go down. And then attach it only to the seam allowance. And you wanna make sure you get the teeth that's budding right up against the actual seam. So you go all the way down and then you zip it up do this other side and then you can base stitch it and then go in to do the regular stitch but what i'm going to do is the second way to do it if you have double-sided tape it just kind of takes away one of the steps so you have the double-sided tape and you put this on the right side of the zipper And just kind of press this in just so that it's, a, it's on there a little tighter. Then open up the zipper. Then take off one side of the double sided tape. get as close as you can. So now what you're gonna do is go ahead and take it over to your machine using your zipper foot and you're going to stitch this in place on both sides. As well as across the bottom, making sure you don't stitch through the actual, uh, the face of the fabric. So just stitch down each side. Okay, so we have the zipper stitched in. Now what you wanna go ahead and do is open up the base stitching. Okay, so we have the basting stitches open. Now what you want to do is you want to take and kind of push the zipper teeth over a bit 
and you want to press them open as flat as possible without actually pressing over the, the uh, zipper tee. Once you do that, you wanna again take the zipper foot and stitch as close as you can into kind of like this little divot that's in here. And you wanna do that on both sides. Okay, so I stitched like in this little divot here. And now what you wanna do is go ahead and close the zipper. It's nice and flat. Now we're gonna go ahead and press it. Okay, so it's nicely pressed out. Now what you wanna do is go to the end of the zipper. And what you wanna do, just to kind of mark it, you can use this or you can just mark it with a, um, with a chalk, but you want to triple stitch just across here just to reinforce this. Okay, so now we have the zipper completed and we're gonna set this to the side and grab the lining uh, and the, well, facing. And we've already done the darts um, on the front and the back facing. Now what we wanna do is attach at the seams the side seams as well as the shoulders. And then we're gonna go ahead and stitch this using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you do that, go ahead and press the seams open. Okay, so we have the bodice, uh, the seams pressed out. Now what we want to do is, we want to fold this under five eighths of an inch all the way around. So once you pin this, go ahead and take it to the iron and just press it as flat as you can. Okay, so now we have the, um, the lining. And what we're going to do, and it's already folded under and it's pressed. So we're going to unzip the part we've already done, which is the bodice with the first layer and then we're going to turn it around in the front we're going to pin right sides to right sides matching up the shoulder seams and then pinning all the way around So make sure once you get to the back here that you kind of flatten it out a bit to match up the edges. Okay, so once you have it pinned, you wanna go ahead and stitch around the neck after you stitch it, you want to trim it about uh, maybe a quarter or so of an inch off. And then you want to uh, clip into the, the curves. Okay, so we have the lining connected to the bodice. We're going to go ahead and trim it now.
And then we're going to go ahead and clip it on the curve. So once you do that, you want to turn it right side out and then go ahead and press the seam as flat as you can around the neck. Okay, so we have the neck pressed out. Now what you want to do is flip this back with right sides together and you want to fold this out. And you want to match the edges up. So you want to match the edge of the lining facing with the, the, the edge of the zipper. And you want to pin it all the way down. You want to do the same thing on the other side. You want to fold. Okay, so what you want to do now is go ahead and stitch, making sure you don't grab the zipper feet. And you want to do that on both sides. Okay, so we have the facing connected at the zipper on both sides. Now what we want to do is go ahead and clip the corners. Turn it right side out. And then we're going to go ahead and press it. Okay, so now we have the facing nicely pressed out. So let's go ahead and turn this inside out. So here comes the not so fun part. Was it already inside out? Huh. Okay, so we are going to hand stitch the facing. And you're gonna hear me use like the lining and facing interchangeably, just because in the actual pattern instructions, it says lining, but I'm using the facing. So let's go ahead and pin this. All the way around. And then you're going to hand stitch. So when you hand stitch, you're going to make sure you grab just the facing here and also the, the seam allowance. And once you do that, we're gonna go ahead and press it out. Okay, so we have the lining or the facing slip stitched to the uh, bodice. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the side and grab the sleeves. So we're gonna go ahead and take the sleeves. This is also a good time if you want, well, prior to cutting, of course, but if you want additional volume to the sleeve, if this was the pattern prior to cutting out and you wanted, you know, just a bit more volume, you could add maybe 
two to three inches to this. And you can do that because you're going to be using gathering stitches to kind of fit it into its space. You have a little bit of space to work with um, in terms of the sleeve cap. Um, but of course you want to do that prior. Um, so what we're going to do now is with right sides together, we're going to fold this over. And we're going to go ahead and stitch the side seams using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And once you do that, go ahead and press that seam open. Okay, so we have the sleeve stitch and the seam allowance pressed out. Now what you want to do is we're going to turn under the hem. So starting at the uh, the seam, I'm going to do mine one inch. And this is going to depend on like the width of your elastic. I believe that the the uh, pattern calls for uh, I think three eighths of an inch. Yeah, three eighths inch wide. Um, but I think I'm doing like a half an inch because I like mine to be just a little thick. So let's go ahead and I'm going to do one inch. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stitch all the way around, leaving, uh, I guess about an inch and a half, leaving this seam here open because that's where we're going to put feed the elastic through. We're going to do this for both sleeves. Okay, so we have the casing for both of the sleeves. Now what we want to do is just go ahead and feed the, sleeve, uh, the uh, elastic through the casing. So once it's at a comfortable size, then we want to go ahead and double this over. Pin it. Stitch it using a zigzag stitch, trim the elastic, and then we're going to, uh, you know what, we can go ahead and either slip stitch this closed or you can go to the machine and, and close it as well. We're going to do that for both the sleeves. Okay, so we have the elastic inserted into the casing and now what we want to do is add gathering stitches to the top of the sleeve. So there's three different markings on the top of the sleeve. This one right here in the middle, this is just letting you know this is the center of the sleeve. And then you have this marking on this end and a marking on this end. So we're going to add two basting stitches along this area here. So it's going to go from this marking all the way over to this marking and again just make sure the ends of the basting gathering stitches are pretty long we're going to do that for both sleeves okay so now we have 
the gathering stitches done. Let's see, yeah, we have the gathering stitches done. And so what we wanna do now is go ahead and open up the zipper. And this is the right side out. We want to slide the sleeve through here. And you want to match up the bottom seam to the bottom seam of the bodice. And go ahead and pin that. And then pin as you go around. You want to match up the notches. And pin until you get to the marking here. And this is also where the gathering stitches start. So pin just right to that portion here. And you do the same thing on the other side. Match up the notches. And then go ahead and pin. <clears throat> to get here. And then in the center, you have this marking that's going to let you know where the center of the sleeve is right here so you want to match the center of the sleeve up with the center of the sleeve cap so you want to go ahead and put this right on here and then pin this and now what you want to do is go ahead and using the gathering stitches kind of squeeze this in to fit on both sides Okay, so we have this set in. You wanna just go ahead and take a peek at it. Okay, do the same thing with the other sleeve and then go ahead and stitch this. Okay, so we have the sleeve set in and what we need to do now is the sleeve head. So I'm using as my sleeve head um, fleece. You can use fleece, you can also use batting, kind of either or will work. So what we're gonna do is fold this over. So we're gonna pin these. And then we're going to base in the gathering stitches. So we're going to go from here all the way over to here. Two rows of gathering stitches. We're going to do the exact same thing with the second one as well. So we have the gathering stitches done on the sleeve head and we're going to go ahead and insert them. So you want to open up the dress 
kind of fold this part over. So when we set the sleeves in, we had these different markings. We had the one that's going to notate the center and then the two on the side. What we're going to do is place the sleeve head in. Let me grab a pen. And so we're going to use the gathering stitches to allow this to fit in. And so essentially what we're doing is matching this marking up with this marking up here. So we have to do a lot of gathering with this one. And it's a little more challenging because it's a thicker fabric. Just have to move pretty slowly with this. So if you do decide to use um, a fleece to do this, I think it's more comfortable, um, but a batting will be easier to work with. So we're just going to go ahead and work this until we get this to fit. Okay, so now that we have it set in, I want to go ahead and just take a look at it. The sleeve heads really make the sleeves extra, extra. I love them. So we're going to go ahead and stitch these in and then do the exact same thing with the other sleeve head with the other sleeve. Okay, so we have the sleeve head set in. And now what we want to do, we'll go ahead and set that to the side. And we're going to grab pieces 12 and 13, which is the lower side front and the uh, lower front. We're going to go ahead and open this. So we're going to take 12, which is the lower front, and with right sides together. We're going to attach 13, which is the lower side front. We'll go ahead and pin this. And then stitch the two ends using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then press the seams open. Okay, so we have the lower side front and the lower front stitched and pressed. Now we're just going to go ahead and set that to the side. We're going to grab uh, the skirt lower back. Let's see. And with the right sides together, we're going to go ahead and stitch the back. Okay. 
so if you look at mine, it is larger or longer than the actual pattern. And that is because I think I added around three to four inches to it, just so I can give it a little more volume. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch this and then uh, press the seam open. Okay, so we have the back stitched and pressed open. Now we're going to take the lower side front and the front section with right sides together. And we're going to line up the notches. Same thing on the other side. And we're going to go ahead and stitch these sides together using a 5 8 seam allowance and then go ahead and press the seam open. Okay, so we have the front and the back stitched together. And now what we want to do is at the gathering stitches. So we want to add again two rows of gathering stitches but what we want to do is between each seam is when we want to add the gathering stitch. So we want to stitch from this seam all the way over to this seam two gathering stitches and then from this seam to this seam. So you want to put the gathering stitches in between the seams. So go ahead and do that for the entire perimeter of this. Okay, so we have the gathering stitches done. Um, and this is pretty long, um, so which is why it's really important that you break up the gathering stitches. So let's go ahead and turn the upper part inside out. And then we're going to turn the bottom half inside out as well. <clears throat> so we're going to start pinning this in the very front where it's kind of like this part that kind of goes up and or over. It's this long part in the front where it's like, yeah. So it kind of goes up. It's this part, the very front. And so we want to attach that part to the very front of the dress as well. So there's these two corners that we cut into earlier where we reinforced. We want to take the corner of the bottom half and pin it to the corner of the top half. So you want the pointy part, like right here at the tip, to go right here, right where it was clipped into. And then you wanna go ahead and pin that. And do the same thing over in this corner. Take the very tip and pin it. So of course that's leaving this space here in the middle, which is the part we're going to gather. And then we're going to go around, we're going to match, <clears throat> excuse me, the seam to the seam of the top of the dress. And so we're going to match the seams as we go around. The back seam to the back seam here. And then over here.
much as this seam. So once we do that, we're going to go back to the front and we're going to start to gather to fit. And of course, this is going to take a little bit of time to get it to fit in. So just gently pull the two upper threads. I also want to make note that there is an additional seam that's in the front on both sides. Now, you will not see this. It may be a bit confusing because you will not see it on the line drawing, but there is an additional seam that's going to be in the front. After we're all done, I'll show you where it ends up. But um, so if you're going through this process and you're like, wait a minute, I have two additional seams that won't attach to the seam of the, the top of the dress. Um, you're not doing anything wrong. It's, this is just the way the, the pattern was designed. Okay, so now we have all the gathers in. Everything is nicely pinned. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch. Uh -oh, we got this little part here. We're gonna stitch and uh, you're gonna stitch, which is gonna run you about a five eighths of an inseam allowance underneath the second line of gathering. So just kind of a tip, if you don't wanna go through this gathering stage, um, because it is a bit time consuming. You also have the option, you can do pleats. So instead of like doing the gathering all together, you can pleat it into place. It's a lot quicker. Sometimes it gives you a little bit more volume, which I absolutely love. So it's completely your choice. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go and stitch this up. And then what you're going to do after you stitch this is you're going to press the seam upward up toward the bottoms. Okay, so we have the bottom half nicely attached and now we just need to finish the hem. Okay, so what you wanna do is just fold up a half an inch. Let me grab a pen. Fold up a half an inch. And then we're going to press it and then fold up another half an inch. Press this and then do a blind hem stitch. If you don't have the blind hem uh, presser foot, you can also slip stitch or you can just stitch it. It's up to you. Okay, so we have the hem done. I did a blind stitch. And that is it for this dress. So if you have any questions, um, you can leave me a comment. Uh, you can send me an email, whichever works best. Well, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching.